Welcome back everyone to Machine Organization and Programming. This is the final lecture in the sequence about the equivalence of po pointers and arrays and their minor differences. Uh, in this particular lecture we're going to be taking a look at character arrays. The main thing that makes character arrays unique is that they uh, end with a null terminating character and that gives us some interesting possibilities for using pointers to the characters in the array in loops. All right, so. Again, this lecture is a continuation of the above five lectures where we talked about pointers and the memory model and arrays and how they are stored in memory, the connections, uh, the similarities and differences between pointers and arrays, the mathematics, the, the arithmetic by which the compiler figures out where elements of an array are stored, how to pass them to functions and the uh, um, similarities to, param uh, to pointers there. Um, and again, so the example begins kind of abruptly continuing from the previous lecture. Okay, the next thing I want to do is introduce uh, character arrays, also known as strings. There we go. Okay, so first we're just going to make a quick character array. Um, let's put in 10 letters. Uh, let's see here. And I need to be a little careful because strings are terminated by a null terminating character. Um, so here, I'm going to make my string right there in just a second. And what's going to go in this string is actually the character A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. All right, that's too many, isn't it? I only saved room for... There we go. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... And then the very last character is going to be the null terminating character, which is kind of just a flag built into C saying this is the end of a string of characters. And there are just tons of built-in string functions. There are techniques to work with strings that rely on the fact that all strings are going to end with a zero. Not, not the ASCII value zero, the actual number zero. Remember I told you you could use uh, uh, characters to do math with limited like numbers of bits if you uh, like had a memory starved system um, G -H -I. Uh, so at the end of this string there's going to be one more character the null terminating character um, this needs to be a comment there we go so that's what this is going to look like let's go ahead and we'll just print this out so let's see here. we'll do it two ways printf um, let's see, I got a bunch of other stuff in the way, so we'll put some new lines in first, and then we'll do string equals percent %s is the code for printf to understand that what it's getting is a an array of characters. Um, yep, new line, close that up, and give it my string. And then the other thing I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and do this in a loop. Let's see, for, and in this case, let's go with, um, I want the index notation so I can go past the end of my string. Uh, and then I'll show you the, the version with the pointer. So let's see here, int i equals zero, i less than, let's go with 15, let's grab some extras. So we'll go past the end of the string. Um, that will show us that we do get a zero. I want to do i plus plus, and then I want to print out a bunch of things. Here, let's go with printf. First thing we'll print is I, so that would be percent %d in my quote, um, and then we'll print out the character, percent %c, and then we'll print out the address, let's see here, that's going to be percent %p, maybe let's do str of uh, percent %d instead of just that one. There we go, and that that'll give us i str of i and the address address. Yeah, that looks like a very good first attempt at this. And see what typos I made. God, that I got this right are small. I feel like there it is. All right, what did I do wrong? want to take a look at the very first error message str is undeclared first use oh I put those in backwards yeah it's getting late okay now my fingers are on the keys so it's a character array character comes first all right now what mistakes did I make 
Next up we have missing terminating character. Oh, I forgot the quote. There it is. Right there. There we go. No more errors. So I need dot slash dot slash demo.exe. Perfect. Okay. Mm, I forgot the new line. This is no good. No good. Um, right there. File run. There we go. Looking good. Okay. So here's my string a b c d e f g i. <clears throat> At string position zero, we have an A, and that's going to be at this address, <clears throat> 0061 FED6. All right, now characters in C are only one byte, so we would expect that the very next character to be at seven, and then eight, and then nine, one apart. We're no longer counting by fours, A, B, C, D, E, F. Maybe I should have started with this. Um, but here's the deal, um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And then this is a non-printing character, that backslash zero that terminates all strings. Um, so it doesn't print. We just get nothing. And then there's some other symbols. This is just random garbage in memory beyond the end of my array. But let me go back and do one more real quick thing. Uh, not only do I want to print out the value of the character as a character, um, but let's also print it out as a decimal value. And I can show you that it's actually really equal to zero. And to do this, this will just... So in memory, uh, every character is represented by an ASCII code, um, like A is 97, but lowercase a is 97, and lowercase uh, b is 98. I could be wrong, we'll see what they really come out in a second because I'm printing them. Um, and printf is just taking whatever data it goes and reads from that memory. It's a bunch of bits, ones and zeros, and it's saying, okay, treat it as a character when you do this. And that's why it's printing out a, b, and c. It's translating into the ASCII. If it's a percent d, it says, okay, treat it as a decimal. Print it out as a decimal, so we should get 97, 98. Uh, let's actually see that. There we go. So 97, 98. I think that's what I said it was. And again, at position 10, or uh, uh, index 9, we have a non-printing character equal to the value 0. So what this means we can do is that uh, we can write loops that will take advantage of the fact that a, a dereferenced pointer to this character will actually give us the value zero, which is going to be considered false in a loop. So one second, let me let me I'm I'm gonna pause the recording, I'm gonna go get this line, make sure I get it tweaked so it actually is correct, and I'll be right back. Alright, this is just a fun one. I just wanted to walk through this example using uh, pointers at to arrays in a in a, in a loop to do string copy. Um, so here I've got my original string with the A through I letters of the alphabet. And then the backwards uh, Z, Y, X, I've got a second string and I'm going to copy one string into the other. So I've got this one initialized from Z to R going backwards. I'm just going to print them both out, their starting values. I copied and pasted this line after string copy, that's the ending version. Uh, and in the middle here, I'm creating a pointer to the first string, str, a pointer to my second string, Z, Y, X, and then this is where the magic happens right here. There is so much going on in this one line. And this is the kind of power you would see from the, like the, the programmers from the 70s who needed everything to be absolutely as fast and as simple. No, this is not simple. As fast and as short as possible so that this line would compile as quickly as possible. Now what's going on here depends on like a dozen assumptions. The first one is that P and Q are both pointers to strings that the string being copied Q is actually terminated by a zero at decimal value zero, that null terminal backslash zero character. Um, so what's going through? Uh, first thing that happens, these plus pluses and increments happen after the rest of the, the loop. So ignore those for a second. Star P is going to be dereferencing the pointer to that first string, which is going to be the character A, the very first thing. That's what's right there. Star Q dereferences the second string, that's a Z, and we're doing assignment, so it's going to take the Z and re replace the A with a Z. Okay, that's what star P equals star Q does. All right, then we're going to increment. So both of these pointers, first one's pointing to A, which got changed to Z, it's going to increment and now point to B. Okay, the Q is going to increment and go from the Z, now points at the Y. All right, 
Now, because this is an assignment, the assignment has a return value of whatever was assigned. In that case, it was the character uh, Z. So whatever the ASCII value for Z is, it's something like 123 or something like that, is not zero. So this is going to be a true statement when I use assignment inside of the condition for a while loop. Um, and then the semicolon here just means that there's no function, uh, no statement here, just uh, a null statement like pass in Python that does nothing. And so the while loop continues. All of the magic happens inside of this while loop. Now, when we get to the very end of the string, remember there's a null terminal character, something like that at the very end of the string. Not right there. I actually drew it. It's right here, this one. Um, this is going to evaluate to zero. So as soon as it copies that zero, uh, as a decimal value into P to terminate the P string, str. So uh, actually, um, it's this zero, the one at the end of the zyx, because I've got Q that way. Yeah. As soon as that happens, this is going to return that zero, which evaluates to false, and that terminates this uh, string copy loop. So let me go ahead and run this. We'll print this out, and we see that it actually does copy. Uh, let me compile this. Oh, it gives me a warning. Let me, let me talk about this for a second, too. This is just good programming practice. What I did was totally legal. There's nothing wrong with it. But because I'm using assignment inside of a conditional, the, the condition of a while loop, or a condition of like an if statement, they recommend using double parentheses just to give other programmers and myself later on a clue that I'm using assignment inside of a conditional. So just like that. That's the like signal to other programmers that we're doing something a little more complicated than it just looks like. I didn't just forget the double equal. I intended this. All right, let me go back, compile this again. Warning's gone now. We'll run this. We see the two original strings, A through I, and then backwards, Z through R. And after the string copy statement, we now have both of the strings equal to the Z through R version of the alphabet. All righty. Um, yeah, just important safety tip. I think I'm not going to do any more examples. I feel like this is a really long video already. But strings must be terminated. There's got to be room for that ter terminal character. And if you overwrite it or leave it off or something, uh, you'll, you'll see very strange behavior. Something like string copy without that terminating character could copy millions of characters when all you wanted to do was, you know, the 10 from your array. If you, if you don't save space for it or if you accidentally overwrite the terminal character. Uh, just important safety tips. I'm not going to do any examples of that. This is turning into a long video. I'd like to encourage you guys, though, to experiment with that. And if you end up with uh, an infinite loop that you need to kill, remember that holding down Control and mashing C a bunch of times will kill a loop or a very long piece of code. If you uh, do accidentally overwrite your backslash zero and it's copying forever, uh, it doesn't stand for copy. It stands for kill. So it might be useful if you're experimenting.